So good evening, students. This is Arvind. So up to now we discussed the uh, voltage source uh, voltage source concept in the second unit in the fact subject flexible AC transmission systems. And now in from uh, now in this class, I am going to discuss the second part of the second unit that is current source converter. Firstly, I will start with basic concept of current source converter, and then I will go with a three phase full wave diode rectifier. So coming to the first one that is basic concept of CSC that is a current source converter. So actually a current source converter is characterized by the fact that the DC current flow is always in one direction and the power flow reverses with the reversal of DC voltage. So in this respect it differs from voltage source converter in which the DC voltage always has one polarity and the power reversal takes place with the reversal of DC current. So here I will uh, show the diagram, so which conveys the difference between the current source and voltage source converters. Okay, so actually in the first two points, uh, I discussed the difference between current source converter and voltage source converter, and now I will show the two diagrams. It will give you the more information about the difference between current source converter and voltage source converter. So let's see. So these are the two diagrams which gives the difference between voltage source converter and current source converter. So in this one, in the first diagram, we will have a converter box. We will have a converter box. So which consists of a turn off device parallel with in parallel with the diode. And on the right side, we have one reactor or inductor. And on the left side, we have one capacitor. So this uh, circuit consists of the DC power and DC voltage and DC current and active and reactive powers respectively. So all these are in flow in both the directions. Okay. So this is for the voltage source converter and coming to the second one. So this is a, uh, this is for current source converters. This is for current source converters. So here I am not using any specific type of device. Okay. Either diode or thyristor. I am not using any type of device. I am just showing, uh, put one uh, diagram. So this is uh, this one. So uh, for this diagram, uh, on the left side we have one reactor and on the right side we have one capacitor. So if this also consists of DC power and a DC current and DC voltage and active and reactive powers. And these all are uh, flowing uh, single direction or in uh, both directions for in the current source converters. Next, so I already said that these two points in the diagram. So actually the figure, the first diagram, it is uh, entirely for the voltage source converters. So here we are using the converter box for the voltage source converter is symbolically shown with a turn off device with a reverse diode. Okay, whereas the converter box for the current source converter, it is shown in the diagram B is shown without a specific type of device. Okay, so this is because the voltage source converter requires turn off devices with reverse diodes and the current source converter may be based on diodes, conventional thyristors or the turn off devices, either of these types. Okay, either of these devices. And next, so here we have three principal types of current source converters. Okay, those three will be represented with this diagram. So here we have three diagrams. Each diagram uh, gives the principal types of current source converters. So first one gives the diode converter and the second diagram gives the thyristor line commutator converter and the third diagram gives the self commutator converters. In uh, three diagrams, uh, first diagram consists of diode and second, uh, second and third diagram consists of the thyristors. That means turn off devices. And on the left side we have transformer and uh, one filter and capacitors and on the right side we have the reactors for for the three diagrams on the right on the left side we have reactor or inductor inductor component on the right side we have uh, for the first two diagrams we have the transformer and uh, filter and capacitors and uh, for the last diagram we have two capacitors and one transformer Okay, so one capacitor will act as capacitor and one capacitor will act as a filter. Okay, so in, in the three diagrams we have active and reactive power flows, active and reactive power flows. 
okay so i will explain these three diagrams neatly point by point so coming to the first one so that is diode converter so which simplify which simply converts ac voltage to dc voltage so the converter which is used to convert the ac voltage to dc voltage and utilizes ac system voltage for commutation of dc current from one valve to another so obviously the diode based line commutating converter just converts ac power to dc power without any control and also in doing so consumes some reactive power on the ac side on the ac side and coming to the second one that is line commutated converter so it is a totally based on conventional thyristors that to uh, gate turn on but without gate turn off capability with gate turn on and without gate turn off capability yeah. but so here the figure utilizes ac system voltage for commutation of current from one valve to another so this converter can convert and control active power in either direction okay so either direction means it indicates with the uh, arrow mark uh, it uh, arrow mark on both sides okay so this converter can control convert and control the active power in either direction but in doing so consumes reactive power on the ac side and it cannot supply reactive power to the ac system so the line converter converter cannot supply reactive power to the ac system it only consumes the reactive power on the ac side okay next coming to the third one it is a self commutator converter so here it is based on turn off devices like gtos mtos igcts and igbts etc so in which combination of current from valve to valve takes place with the device turn off action and provision of ac capacitors to facilitate transfer of current from valve to valve so coming to the voltage converter there the commutation of current is supported by a stiff dc bus with a dc capacitor in the voltage converter so in a self commutated current source converter the ac capacitors provide a stiff ac bus for supplying the fast changing current pulses needed for the commutations okay next so apart from its capability of controlled power flow in either directions this converter like the voltage source converter can also supply or consumes controlled reactive power however it is interesting to note that even though the converter can supply reactive power sources of reactive power is capacitor and ac filters these two are used in the um, three principal types of current source converters okay not in self commutator and uh, not for uh, self commutator and not for line commutator and not for uh, uh diode converters so in all we have these okay a, an advantage of the converters an advantage of the converters with turn off devices that is uh, nothing but the self commutating converters is that they offer greater flexibility including pwm mode of operation and it must be mentioned that when the converters are based on turn off devices the voltage source converters have been preferred so if you use turn off devices uh, at that time we have to use the voltage source converters uh, have been preferred over the current source converters okay next so up to now we discussed the basic concept of current source converters and now i am moving to the next concept that is three phase full wave diode rectifier so here the three phase full wave diode rectifier is discussed in some more detail than necessary why because in order to build the explanations up to the fully convert uh, fully controlled converter so in any case the diode rectifier is very useful as a low cost source of dc power obtained from an available ac source okay here the rectifiers with a rating greater than a few tens of kilowatts will almost uh, always be a three phase full wave circuit so that will i will show in the next diagram so it can a combination of several circuits so this arrangement i will show in the next diagram okay so this is a three phase full wave diode rectifier diagram that is the first diagram so if you use, observe this diagram so on the left side we have the a star connection of the three phase circuit so it consists of the three terminals namely a b and c and these all are connected 
uh, with the neutral connection n and on the right side and these three phases are connected to the right side diagram that is anode dc bus so here we have six valves totally six valves uh, why because it is a three phase full wave diode rectifier so that's why here we are using six diodes each is in a, represented with a number 1261234567 on the top we have 136 on the bottom we have 462 and uh, on the uh, left side of the diagram we have the cathode dc bus okay and it consists of a inductor and it consists of a voltage and current also and we have oh, wave forms 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, totally six diagrams we have six wave forms uh, so i will discuss these wave forms uh, uh, one by one okay so coming to this one so in order to first simplify the explanation and still be realistic so it is assumed that the dc side is dc side inductance is very large so on the right side of the diagram we have the dc side so at that time we are used the inductor or reactor so the dc side inductance is very large this is only assumption okay and therefore the dc current is constant okay and the circuit consists of six valves i already said this point the circuit consists of six valves numbered 1 2 6 and the number of sequence conveying the order of the current the number of sequence conveying the order of the current and transformer and the dc output voltage okay transfer of a current and dc output voltage and the current commutates from valve to valve that is from diode to diode to turn it into an ac current to turn it into ac current next so the diagram the second diagram of that uh, representation the second diagram shows the three phase ac wave forms three phase ac wave forms that is va vb and vc with respect to the transformer neutral with respect to the transformer the neutral that is the first diagram sine waves three sine waves is there okay those are the three phase ac wave forms the two voltage wave forms okay so in that one assuming that the ac system impedance is zero just to assume and the transformer is ideal okay the top wave forms of the diagram also show voltage wave wave forms of the two dc buses with respect to the transformer neutral okay so this is followed by the wave forms for the constant dc current ac current wave forms in relation to constant dc current and the dc output voltage between the two dc buses okay next so the beginning of diagram the second diagram shows that so actually uh, the total uh, the first diagram consists of the time instants from t1 to t6 why because here we are using six valves that's why we are we have six in time instants that is t1 to t6 so here the instant from instant t1 to t2 valve 1 and 2 are conducting okay so the dc current takes the path valve 2 so the dc current flows in the valve 2 into phase c from valve 2 to phase c the current the dc current flows out of phase a and valve 1 okay out of phase a and valve 1 Next, the DC buses are connected to phases A and C. Okay, and the DC output voltage is that between phases A and C. Okay, the DC output voltage is that between phases A and C, as shown by the thick lines. So, if you observe the waveform, you will understand. So, this is the waveform. So, here we have three sine waves, three phase waveforms. So, here we have we are using six valves. That is one to six, and here we have. six time instance that is t1 to t6 okay these are all these are all are voltage wave forms ac voltage wave forms va vb vc like that and we have the dc voltage and we have the we have the formula for that one okay so next so the the dc buses are connected to okay, i already discussed this one so and coming to the point t3 there is a time instant t3 the voltage of phase b the voltage of phase b becomes positive with respect to phase a and valve 3 becomes forward biased at time instant t3 the valve 3 becomes forward biased okay being a diode it starts conducting and takes the current 
power from valve 1 and the output DC voltage follows the voltage between the thick lines of phases B and C. Okay. And next, the current waveforms show that the current is flowing through valve 2, phase C, phase B and valve 3. Okay. So, the current waveforms shows like that. In that one, the current is flowing through valve 2 and 3 and phases A, B and C. Sorry, B and C. Okay. And next at instant T4, phase A becomes negative. At instant T4, phase A becomes negative with respect to phase C and valve 4 becomes forward biased at time instant T4. Okay. And starts conducting and takes the current over from the valve 2. Okay. And then at instant T T5, valve 5 takes over from valve 3. At instant T6, valve 6 takes over from valve 4. And at instant T1, valve 1 takes over from valve 5 for one complete cycle. Okay. Like that, uh, the cycle repeats. Okay. And the current in the three phases is shown and is made up of 120 degree blocks of DC current through an upper and lower valve of each phase leg. Okay. Next. So, it should be noted that in a current source converter, the commutation takes place from valve to valve among valves connected to the same DC bus that is valves 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 5, 5, 2, 1 and so on. But here there is a difference between voltage source converter and uh, current source converter between these points. So, this is different from the voltage source converters in which the commutation occurs between the valves connected to the same phase like that is valve 1 to 4 and 4 to 1 and uh, so on like that we repeat. Okay, same valve in the voltage source converter, but in the current source converter, it is connected to the same DC bus, but the valves are different 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 5, 5, 2, 1 and so on. Okay, as a result, the waveforms of the AC voltage of a voltage source converter are made up of 180 degrees blocks and consequently have triple harmonics. This is for voltage source converter. And coming to the waveforms of AC current of a three phase current source converter are made up of 120 degree blocks and consequently do not have the triple harmonics. The voltage converter consists of the triple harmonics and the phase uh, phase difference is 180 degrees. But for the current source converter, the phase difference is 120 and there is uh, no triple harmonics. Triple harmonics, okay. And the DC output voltage as shown at the top of the figure B is for the two DC buses with respect to the transformer neutral. You already know this one. And adding the magnitude of these two waveforms gives the voltage of the upper DC bus with respect to the lower DC bus. Okay, here I am adding the magnitude of these two waveforms. It gives the voltage of the upper DC bus with respect to the lower DC bus. Okay, as shown at the bottom of figure B, the DC output voltage has six pulse waveform made up of the sum of two three phase half wave circuits. 2 3 phase that is 6 okay 2 3 phase half wave circuits next the dc output voltage is made up of 60 degree segments and with the peak of ac voltage as a reference point so it is defined by e is equal to root 2 into e into cos omega t okay this is the peak of ac voltage okay as a reference point next so, from that equation where E is the phase to phase voltage, this ideal output voltage is given by V0 is equal to 3 by pi integral minus pi by 6 to plus pi by 6 root 2 E cos omega t d of omega t. So, here I am taking 3 root 2 by pi uh, on the left side and we have E. So, the integration of cos E gives the sign sin omega t. The upper limit and lower limits is also there minus 5 by 6 to plus 5 by 6. After uh, simplifying that one, we have 3 root 2 by pi into E. And lastly, we have the value 1.35 into E. So, okay. So, the output voltage is positive with the DC current flowing out of the anode bus of the converter. Hence, the power flow is from AC to DC. That is the rectifier action. AC to DC means it is a rectifier action. And the DC output voltage contains some harmonics. Okay, 
and the AC current is made up of square wave blocks of 120 degree duration each half cycle. So after the sine wave, we have the square waves. Okay, those are the AC current waveforms. Okay, here the waveform consists of the 100 degrees duration of each half cycle. Okay, and next the RMS value of this phase current is given by I is equal to root of 1 by P integral minus pi by 3 to plus pi by 3 I D square into D of omega T. So after simplifying this one, we have I D square by pi into so integration of uh, uh, d of omega that is it consists of sin omega t it consists of the upper and lower limit that is minus pi by 3 to plus pi by 3 so that is equal to root 2 by root 3 into i d that is equal to 0 0.816 i d okay 0 0.816 i d and next ac current also has harmonics okay ac current also has harmonics here equating the fundamental AC power and the DC power that means neglecting the losses here. Um, here I am equating the fundamental AC power and DC power that is root 3 into EI that is equal to VD into ID and substituting VD in terms of E from the first equation it gives the RMS fundamental AC current that is I1 is equal to fundamental AC current that is I1 is equal to root 6 by pi into ID. Uh, finally, we have the value that is 0 0.78 into ID. Next, the RMS difference between the total RMS current that is I and the RMS fundamental current uh, is the total RMS harmonic current. Okay, that is I suffix H is equal to root of I square minus I1 square that is equal to 0 0.24 ID. That is the RMS difference between the total RMS current and the RMS fundamental current I and I1. Okay, there was one simplifying assumption in the above discussion that the current instantaneously commutated from valve 1 to 3, 2 to 4, etc. Okay, in reality it will make, it will take a significant time. Typically it may take about 20 degrees to 30 degrees. Okay, and the commutation of inline commutated converters involves transfer of current from one phase to another through the valves in an inductive circuit of the AC system including the transformer inductance. Okay. Next consider again the same diode circuit that is the first diagram okay, which shows that at instant T3 when valve 3 becomes forward biased starts to conduct with valve 1 carrying the full DC current. Okay. So the conducting of both valves that is 1 and 3 represents a short circuit between phases A and B with the short circuit current raising from phase B through valve 3 into phase A through valve 1. Okay, But once the short circuit current equals the DC current through valve 1, its net current reaches 0, valve 1 stops conducting and the commutation is completed. And the short circuit current between the two phases for this period of commutation, it consists of the angle gamma naught is defined by 2 into L into di by, by dt is equal to root 2 into E into sin omega t. Okay, next, this is the waveform we have uh, for this one. So here also I am taking on the left side we have three phase connection. So these three phases are connected to the right side diagram so it consists of six valves one two three four five six six those six are diodes okay on the left side on the right side we have the inductor di inductor connection okay so this is the commutating diodes these three okay these are the black shaded diodes is it these are the commutating diodes okay so these are the diagrams we have waveforms for the voltages and currents okay these are our waveforms we have so here we have the current that is uh, the equation is 2L into DIS by DT that is equal to root 2 into E into sin omega T. So where IL is the inductance of each phase, okay, inductance of each phase, here neglecting the resistances, okay. Integrating the above, we have IL is equal to E by root 2 into 1 minus cos omega T, okay. So here we have where L is the inductance of each phase neglecting the resistance integration gives 
i s is equal to e by root 2 omega l into 1 minus cos omega t assuming that when i s is equal to i d omega t is equal to gamma not gives i d is equal to here i s is equal to i d replace i s with i d that is i d is equal to e by root 2 omega l into 1 minus cos in omega t place we have to substitute gamma naught so from this equation the commutation angle gamma naught can be calculated okay it is noted from the diagram that the output voltage is somewhat reduced compared to the output voltage corresponding to gamma is equal to 0 in the first diagram that is in figure 4.3 and during the commutation the output follows the mean of two short circuited voltages the low the last voltage corresponds to the shaded area every 60 degrees and is given by and is given by do v is equal to do a by pi by 3 and do a is equal to 1 by 2 integral 0 to gamma naught root 2 e sin omega t d of omega t after simplifying this we have 1 by root 2 e of 1 minus cos gamma naught and do v is equal to 3 by root 2 pi into e of 1 minus cos gamma naught and do v is equal to 3 omega l by pi into i d and we have v d is equal to v naught minus do v so that is equal to v naught minus 3 omega l by pi into i d thus the dc voltage drop in the converter due to the commutation of dc current i d is directly proportional to the i d so on the dc side the voltage drop may be simulated as a resistance that is equal to 3 omega l by i d and next so this does not mean that there is a loss of power because it is not an actual resistance and it can be visualized from the current waveform in the figure 4.4 that the current is somewhat shifted to the right by the commutation process so this means that the ac side power factor is reduced from unity to a somewhat lower value in the lagging direction which in turn means that some reactive power is consumed so this power factor reduction corresponds to the reduction in the dc voltage equating the dc and ac power and next so here we have root 3 into el cos phi that is equal to vd into id that is equal to v naught minus 3 omega l by pi into id into id so which combined with equations 4.1 and 4.3 gives cos phi is equal to 1 minus 1 by v naught 3 omega l by pi so for practical estimation power factor angle phi may be taken as phi is equal to alpha plus 2 gamma by 3 for 0 less than alpha less than 30 degrees here the angle is uh, between 0 to 30 degrees and after that phi is equal to alpha plus gamma by 3 so this is for alpha in between 30 degrees to 90 degrees okay and thank you so oh, this is the concept we discussed uh, today that is uh, uh, current, basic concept of current source converter and a three phase full wave diode rectifier. Okay, thank you.